Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Baroness Levy Deluxe. This is the Glamour Circus. Thank you so much for joining me. If you don't know who I am, I do makeup videos, hair videos, um, jewelry videos, photography videos, and they're all vintage inspired in my own style. If you like my style, please uh, join my channel. Click the bell for notifications on my latest videos. And uh, let's get started. So today I'm going to do an airbrush makeup video. I've already done my concealer, I haven't done my foundation, and um, I wanted to talk about a really great airbrush makeup company out of North Carolina called All Dolled Up, and they were kind enough to sponsor this video, and I wanted to give them a shout out. Um, they do a lot of event type makeup, so everything from weddings to editorial to television to um, even people doing political talks, they will go in and do airbrush makeup and they come in with all their stuff. They use a couple different um, companies and um, the owner, Beth, she's great and she's got some experience in doing makeup and creating these variety of looks. And so I always like to tell people about different companies and about all different types of makeup. I think it's um, really important to know that makeup can really do a lot for you and a lot of people will judge you if you wear too much but the truth is I mean wedding, editorial, news, political events, any kind of special event it's really a great addition to having your picture taken and it really can help you look natural if not a height natural and uh, Beth is great at creating a variety of looks and so um, today I'm going to show you one look that I'm going to do as I talk about airbrush makeup and what it can do and um, I was torn. I'm either going for a natural pink brown, which I did so many times, or I want to do some wild greens with the pink. Um, for the purposes of the video, I think I'm going to go a little wilder, but that's the beauty about airbrush makeup. You can go super natural, subtle extreme, and make it look as if you're not wearing a lot of makeup. You can do in between and a heightened look, and then you can do extreme colors like these really cool greens, which I'm going to do, um, just because that's my style. But uh, there's a real variety of what you can do, and you don't have to be a um, makeup artist to do airbrush makeup, but if you're doing a special event like a wedding, editorial, television, uh, a talk in front of people, I do recommend getting a makeup artist. And it's worth your money and time because they can show you things that you may not know, and they can present you in a way that you may not see yourself or know how to present yourself. So I think it's worth it. You can even take lessons with this company all dolled up, if you're not sure how to groom for camera, you can also, um, uh, I believe she does one-on-one -on -one lessons as well as group lessons, and um, you can just hire her to do the event. Um, I think it's a great addition because as a photographer, makeup really does help, um, and you don't have to wear a ton to, um, pop in front of the camera, but you have to do it right. And then for people who do like to wear a lot of makeup and really pop, depending on what you're doing, if it's a performance, you need that extra extra. Um, there's an art to it. So um, that is why I do airbrush makeup videos and I do glamour videos. And uh, I just, my style is I'm very vintage inspired. I love pinup and I love vintage beauty. So I always try and take my looks and twist them. But at the same time, I always talk about modern pinup because I love the convenience of modern tools. And so one of those modern tools is airbrush guns. And the gun I'm using today is by Dynair. I bought this over a year ago, loved it. And then it just stopped working. Left it alone, I've been using other guns. There's a great gun by Tickle Pink that I use. Um, there's just a ton of companies and products out there that you can use. So hopefully these videos will give you some information and help your purchasing decisions and just kind of figure out what works for you. Um, so today I'm using the One Gun. It is cordless, so it's charged already. And I purchased a new JX gun. And if you haven't seen my other videos, I sometimes talk and touch on the different needles and the types of needles. Um, this is a JX, which in the Dynair world is a different shape and style than the CX, which is what they normally had on the majority of their guns. And I noticed that they have transitioned and now you have the option of either gun. So I bought an extra gun as a backup. It's like maybe 50 bucks. And it's great as a makeup artist to have extra guns on hand. Um, I know when you're working, because I've done it, I've had clients lined up and if a gun jams, you don't have time to clean it, just get another gun. Or you may be double dueling and doing eyes with one, foundations with another, and it just helps mainstream so you can cut down on the cleaning time. 
But um, so this video is kind of for newbies, uh, people interested in airbrush who may not know, and maybe the experienced professional. Also, somebody who might be interested in having services done by someone who does airbrush makeup and wants to learn more about it. So, if you have questions, feel free to put them down below. I always get to them, and I appreciate your support. I appreciate you watching. Once again, like that, click that like, uh, click the bell for notifications, and if you really love this channel, join me. So, I'm going to get to it. So, I've already done a concealer, and um, I use the MAC NW25, which is more pink than my skin. And once again, if you've seen my videos, you know I like to play off the of pinks and yellows that are in the skin tone. So I play off of that. It warms up my skin for me and gets rid of that kind of dark, shallow look underneath the eyes, around the mouth, discoloration. It's quite of a heavier consistency. So with the airbrush makeup, I use concealers, primers, anything that will help the skin pop, as well as great skincare. Skincare is so important. But today, I'm going to just kind of do a really fun look and talk you through and give you some more information about airbrush makeup. And All Dolled Up is available for services out in North Carolina. Uh, they travel. Um, they're on the coast there. You can look them up. I'll put their website down below. And they are really great um, with event makeup and special occasion. They do, uh, like I said, editorial. They do television people. Um, they do weddings, mass amounts, so um, they're really a real variety if you're looking for somebody in that area um, for your airbrush needs. Or if you have questions, you know, you can always reach out. Okay, so uh, I'm going to go in, actually uh, I've already sprayed my foundation. I filmed that a little bit earlier. I was debating whether I wanted to talk or walk through this and I decided halfway through I'm going to walk through it. So I may pop in my airbrush clip and we'll talk over that. And then right now, so I'm just gonna let you know what I used. I used the Dark Gold um, 130 Soft Glow. I have a little bit of discoloration, a little bit of acne, so I like a little bit of coverage. You can spray as light or as heavy as you want, and that's what's so beautiful about Airbrush, and that's why I use it every day on myself. Um, and then I went in with the Vanilla 106 as my highlight, and I go through the center underneath the eyes is a triangle around the mouth. Now for me, this is my to-go kind of everyday quick contouring. Uh, contouring you can go really defined, darker, and you can use concealers and airbrush together, they work fine. You can do the airbrush and just contour and cut in. And I will contour in here and underneath my cheekbones, but I have a small nose, so I don't really need to contour my nose. And I'll go into the temples. Um, this look is not so much a tanned, uh, look, I do a little bit more color and my uh, look is a little more retro. And maybe on the alternative side, you can decide. Um, I just kind of do what works for me and my hair and everything. I have black hair, so I like to pop. Okay, so those are some of the products I've used. And most important, if you want a smooth look with your foundation, it doesn't matter if it is airbrush or uh, regular liquid, you want to use a primer. And it's so tricky on people's skin and that's why you need to go to a professional because you want to be able to um, not have your skin break out or go patchy and your professional should know or should I have on hand different primers. Um, I use an Instant Smooth by Clarins and that um, just kind of just does a very light smoothing and so when I put the makeup on it's very uh, flawless and I don't have to work as hard with my foundation so I don't use as much product and I use maybe a few drops and and that's it. For camera, I'll use more. I like a really kind of porcelain flawless face for, um, but it's lightweight so I can't really feel it. So um, we've done that. We are gonna go in and do some blush. I'm gonna do the dark peach pink. Today all the products I'm using are by Dynair and the gun I'm using. I do use other companies. I love Tickled Pink, I use them as well as Bellissimo has been decent in foundation. I found them on Amazon and I haven't really branched into anyone else. I've been really happy um, working within this product range and the pricing is very good as well. So I'm gonna do maybe two drops of this and then this button just goes on. Always test first. And I'm just gonna use soft, small circles. And for the newbie, always, you should be your lever is never a straight spray. You are always doing soft circles, a nice distance, and you're pulsing the trigger. So you're always moving that trigger back and forth. 
Otherwise, you're spraying straight product onto your face, and what's gonna happen is it's gonna be very clumpy and kind of flat. So the beauty about airbrush, it's like airbrush painting, so you can create these nice, light, flawless looks, and you can go as heavy or as light, and no one can really tell. So you can see I just gave a subtle hint of pink, and that's all we need right now. Now I am gonna clean my gun in between, so bear with me. It's gonna be a long video. <laughs> anyway, um, so that was dark peach pink. I will list everything down below. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But feel free to ask. Um, you get the general idea of the colors. If you're more experienced, you probably already know what I'm talking about. And I always keep a little black towel on my lap and I've somehow, oh, it's dropped. Okay. So I like to keep it on hand. I also have the little pot. So when I'm cleaning my gun, I use my cleaner, put a couple drops, spray it into my pot, and sometimes I'll test, use this to test the black towel. And I just help, it just keeps everything nice and clean. I also use a Q-tip with a pointed end, pull back the lever and I clean out any extra and I'll just give this another spray and I'm going into my lap just to make sure the gun's always working. These are just little habits and little things that I have done through the years to ensure my gun is always working, to ensure I get a flawless finish, <coughs> to ensure I don't spill product, product isn't mixed with other product, and then going on a face. All these little things may seem like annoying, but they actually help you be a better artist. And it doesn't matter if you're doing it for yourself or for uh, hundreds of people. These little things are what make you <coughs> good at what you do and give you a flawless finish. So today I'm gonna use, do the fun greens. I've been really into green this summer. And we're gonna do green olive. Um, the first two colors are a little bit more matte, which I love. So about two drops, I spray on my towel to test. And then I'm just gonna go in this one, I'm just gonna kinda do the bottom half of the lid and kinda pull it up. You can see it doesn't take much or long. I'm pulsating on that trigger. If you're watching me very closely, um, never spray straight. I know there's some guns out there that do that, but this is what's gonna give you your, your airbrush look and your even coverage. And you have to really look in your mirror to see if it's even. On, when you're doing it on yourself, it's a little trickier than when you do it on someone else. On someone else, you can see it. On your own eyes, it can sometimes be tricky. And if you wear glasses, it can be really tricky. But at the same time, airbrush makeup is really great for people who do wear glasses, who have trouble seeing up close, but want to wear makeup. Because you don't have to do complicated, complicated looks or really fine lines to get a beautiful finish. You could spray your foundation without having to see clearly, <laughs> as well as just do a soft eye like this, put mascara and go. And I know that when people wear glasses or wear contacts, it can be tricky. So that's some things to think about. And if you have questions about how to do makeup or eye glasses or contacts, just let me know. Okay, so I'm gonna go underneath the eye because I wanna do something a little fun today. You can do theatrical makeup with airbrush. It's uh, 24 hours and I find it to be great quality. There are different products you can get to extend the wear, to protect it. Um, I mean, the uses are terrific. So I know that wedding season, we're in the middle of wedding season right now, so some of these looks may or may not be, depending on the type of bride, um, what you're after. But it really, it's really important to push your creativity and to do stuff outside of the box because you can get some of the most beautiful colors and combinations when you just don't try and always fit the mold of what everyone else is doing. So I love being really creative with my airbrush makeup and that's why I'm pushing to do the greens to show you something different and get you thinking. It may not be your jam, but it might be something that gets you thinking about how to apply those browns so they actually pop. And if what if you notice, um, or if you've watched all my videos, everything that I do because I have photography, uh, photography background is about light and shadow and bring in depth and bringing people in and holding them in with makeup as well as the photography. So I am creating light and darks. I've already done that with foundation. And that's all makeup is, you're creating lights and darks. And if you're an older, if you're older or if you have an older client who has shadowing and jowls or wrinkles, you can still use airbrush makeup and make them look natural and not cakey. It may be that you wanna go into a different type of foundation. You might not wanna use a soft glow matte because this is gonna give me a little more coverage. 
and it does cover fine lines, but for an older client, I might use the Glamour one by Dynair, or there, I know Temp2 has a great foundation as well. Um, something that has more of a dewy base. If you love this coverage, but you want it to look more dewy, then I would grab the Jojoba oil, I'm gonna say that wrong, the Jehovah oil that comes with the kits and you can purchase through Dynair. Um, and you can do one drop, and just put it in areas where you need it to be dewy. Don't do the whole face unless you really are going for a gl glistening look and it's editorial or something. Um, for every day, it'll be too much. That one drop goes so far, it's crazy. You can also spray it on your body, use it on your hands. It's a Jehovah oil, so it's, it's really nice. And so they package it into a little container. You can use one drop. You can turn your matte foundation instantly into a dewy finish, or you can do a combo which is where the creativity is in the airbrush makeup. There's so much you can do. So unlike traditional makeup, and I'm a big fan of using whatever tool you need to complete the job, but in traditional makeup, your foundations are either dewy or matte. And you can add little things to it, um, but you can see this is only taking me a couple seconds. So this one uh, we're doing is a brighter green. I love this one. Uh, this one's just called Green. It's out of the Fantasy Collection with Dynair, and it's super bright. Love it. But for my dark hair, my look, my pinup vibe, it works. So I'm going to go through the center, keeping it a little bit lower. I'm going to go through the, the lid. I just want a little bit through the ball of the lid. I'm not really going in here too much yet. I'm just kind of crossing over. I just want to do a nice, even kind of where I see the eyeball popping out. I call it the ball of the lid. And you can see I've already created a brightness, and this is already darkened. So I love that. You could do that with browns, you could do that with shades of pink. Okay, so we're gonna just clean that green out. And then my next color is Appletini, which has a shimmer. It's an opalescent. And out of that line, the opalescents are heavier. And that's why um, you have to be more careful with the CX guns spraying this, because I felt it clogged more. And they even told me that when I did the training, I think seven years ago I went down there. Um, I went down for two days in LA and I trained with them. Um, and what was the greatest benefit was seeing the colors up close. But the foundation I had invested in was a foundation they no longer carry because it didn't push through the gun very well. So that was a waste of money. <laughs> but anyway, it was worth it to go down. Um, and from that experience, I've been able to figure out what works for my skin, for my clients, for my shoots, for my photography, what I like to do in the camera. <clears throat> so Apple Teeny's got more of a shimmer. <clears throat> it's super pretty. <laughs> the owner of the company is amazing. She's created this phenomenal uh, line. And she worked in the movie industry as a makeup artist. So she had a lot of experience with working on camera. Okay, anyway, so now we have our two greens. The Apple Teeny is like this beautiful pop and shimmer. So I'm gonna go right through the eye. And if you can see that, it, right away, it's just like, it's green, but with a shimmer. You don't need much, so I'm just gonna make sure that's even. And even though this seems like a heavy look, I'm actually not applying very many colors in terms of the, the consistency, it's not heavy. So I'm gonna leave that. I just want it right on the top. I see a little bit of pilling in here. So I'm gonna spray light. So that's another thing. If you're getting pilling when you're spraying with your gun, you're spraying too fast and too heavy and too much product. And that's too fast and too heavy. So you have to be, um, how should I say it? Pulsating this trigger. Do not spray straight. You'll have too much, it'll look cakey. And it's best to build light. Now with the one guns, you, you do not have a speed control. So you have to practice, even if it's just putting water into your gun, I don't care what kind of gun it is, and spraying on a piece of paper and practicing that pulsating with the trigger. And that's giving you that, that even and, and flow. It's, it's pushing the product out and you're controlling how fast and how hard. Now with the other guns, oh, I don't, I've packed them all away, but I probably have every Dynair gun there was made. Plus I have Tickle Pink, which I love. Tickle Pink has a three um, tier uh, speed zone, which makes it really easy, especially if you're new to makeup. So if you're new to make new new to makeup, new to airbrush makeup, or new to makeup, I recommend getting a compressor that has speeds that you can adjust. The Dynair line will have a, a, a dial that turns. I personally didn't like the dial. I, I really loved just having no speed, but I work differently. And I also have been doing this for years now. Um, I think it's been seven years just airbrush makeup, probably. Ugh, double that. Anyway, <laughs> um, 
So just a little tech talk. Um, let's get back to it. So I've cleaned that out. Oh no, I haven't. Uh, it's still green. Let's keep chatting. So um, some more things to know while you're spraying. So I find that the opalescents are a little heavier. So you want to take care in spraying it and how much you product to apply into your gun. And then you want to make sure you really clean that out. I clean it out because I'm using one gun all the time. Even when I had like 15 clients in a weekend, I was using one gun. I had backup guns and I had one compressor and they were very reliable. Um, I had no problems, but I'm always cleaning my gun. I'm always making sure it's clean, the colors aren't mixing, there's no mistakes. Um, another tip, you have to shake and hear the ball. If you don't hear that ball, keep shaking, tap it. If you're gonna bite it, make sure this is closed tight. And it doesn't look great in front of clients when you bite your product, but I know it's a necessity, sometimes you just gotta do it. But tapping it seems to be the best. And then when you start to hear that ball inside, just keep shaking. Now that's specific to the Dynair line. With Tickle Pink, for example, it is aloe base, there's no ball inside, so it's not like a spray paint. And you just shake, but you do have to shake well. All these paints in anybody's line, you have to shake well, okay? So we've cleaned this out, you can see, no color, and that's how I check. I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna do a little pop of pink, just for fun. This is called Shocking, and once again, it is another opulescent, opulescent um, color. So, the reason why I just looked down is, um, my makeup area, maybe I'll do a shot of it to show you. It's quite compact, and I'm on carpet. And for years, I was getting makeup all over my carpet. I got this special cleaner somebody sold me to like, and I'd, I'd be scrubbing my carpet. So last week, I was fed up. No more scrubbing my carpet. So I got a um, full little floor that you can get from Office Depot, and it's for office chairs to slide around. Um, for the exact reason of if you're on carpet, you put that down and then your chair can move around while you're working. So I'm on a, a bench, but it stops the makeup from hitting the carpet, and I've been, been able to clean it, and it's been great. So that's why I looked down, because I'm so excited at my floor. I was like, did that just catch that drop? Yeah! <laughs> All right, back to the makeup. So I've got some pink. Now with the pink, I've got this beautiful green eye. I could just do a black and a gorgeous lash and be done. But um, let's do something fun. So I'm gonna go into the corners of the eye and you can see I still have some skin color there. And I'm gonna extend it out. And I've just got this kind of fun pink, nice and light. And I'm gonna do it on this side. And I just like look back and forth to each eye and balance it. And as you can see, I'm not doing any heavy line, so I'm just letting it blend in. So once again, it's great for somebody who's probably challenged with eye makeup. And that's all I need. And then I might go underneath here for fun. And just blend it in. I'm gonna clean that out. So that was two drops, and that was sh called Shocking, and it's like a deep magenta pink. I love it. One of my favorite colors. I love wearing like a magenta lipstick with that. Okay, so that's great. Now you can do your liners with um, any airbrush line. You can mix pretty much any product. The products or the airbrush makeup that I use is water-based. So you wanna keep it water-based. And professionals like All Dolled Up, who I'd mentioned, who are ideal to hire for your special event, know this stuff and so they know that what products can mix so if you're trying to save on time and look fantastic for your wedding say you have a, a speech or a talk or you're going on television or you're doing editorial magazine you're promoting your product your small business and you want just some killer photos headshots um, you want to go to a professional and someone like all dolled up will know what products can mix with what products i am a big fan of using whatever works to hit your goal for that reason, I love my liquid liners. I love my tips for the looks that I'm going for. Yes, you can do it with airbrush. So if you're a diehard airbrush person, feel free. Um, I'm looking for my magic liner and I found it. I also have a MAC green liner. I've been really playing with shades of green. That's been my thing this summer. So this liner is a beautiful, I don't know if we can see that, green. 
and and I'm using a Wet n Wild liquid liner. These are amazing. So they're comparable to the Kat Von D tattoo. Um, they're five bucks, so they're a quarter of the cost. And you can get them in any drugstore, which um, if you watched my videos, I love being able to pick up products anywhere when I'm traveling and shooting because it's, it's just easy. You can find a drugstore anywhere. So I'm gonna go in and I'm just gonna do a little line on top. And for all you full face diehard airbrush people, I know you're cringing because you're like, you could do that with the airbrush. You can, but I'm not. And I'm showing the diversity in what you can do and how you can mix products. And my whole goal is to open people's minds. And if I can do it with makeup, by doing the unusual, perhaps you will do the same. Okay. Okay, so I just had to pause and come back because I heard noises downstairs. Okay, so I've gone in, done some green, and I did a black liner over top. Um, I'll smudge that out, or I could leave it. And then I'm gonna go in with the jet black. And I'm gonna do my famous winged liner, which I love to do. And I'm using a stencil. And I'm just gonna softly, I'm softly spraying, I'm pulsing that spray, and I'm moving around creating a wing, but I'm spreading it out a little bit. See that? So this wing liner you can do smaller for a wedding to create some more definition. You could do bigger for dramatic. So I did my, this is my medium. And I'm gonna go into the next eye. All right, and there we go. So, you could have done a yellow in the middle, you could have left it clean, you could do a white. Um, you can really play creatively with this look, and I do wear this look out and in the daytime and every day, and I have no problem carrying it off, and people love it. I get tons of compliments. Um, and if you're interested, and if you like what you're seeing, I can show you more techniques with different ways of putting the airbrush makeup into the eye to make it more creative and interesting. I guess I got bored of just doing, um, you know, the same old browns and pinks. And so I wanted to play around with placement and I wanted to play around with color. And as an artist and a photographer, um, you know, I want to give my clients something different whenever I do this. So, you know, like, um, airbrush artists will give you that extra little pop and little edge that you're looking for, um, for a unique event or, you know, whatever, whatever it is you're, you're doing that you yourself would not do or wear, um, it's always interesting or pay is to go to a professional who can do it for you. So, what else can I do here? Okay, so we've got the colors down. And um, for the sake of just, because I've been talking about airbrush non-stop, let me put a shimmer in. Now, for my day-to-day, -day, I don't do a ton of shimmer because I don't need to, and I feel like it's a bit much because I'm not doing much but walking the dog. <laughs> but, and working at a computer remote. So, um, okay, so that's a lot of black I gotta clean out. You really wanna be careful. So that's why it's so important to get in the habit of cleaning out your colors in between. And your artist should have immaculate standards when it comes to cleaning up their makeup. Um, that's how you know someone's been doing it a long time. Okay, so we're just gonna give that a second. Um, I'm gonna use these really beautiful, mm, they're called, I think they're called by Kiss Secret Lash, but they're these really light, if you look at the cross pattern, I don't know if you can see that, it is like this way and this way, and it's all full of it, and it's staggered a small to light. So I'll put the name of the lash down below, and it's very light, so you could wear it by itself, and it looks really cool. It looks like it looks like you have a lash, but it's it's subtle. So even though I'm doing like a bit of a more dramatic makeup looks, a lot of the times my lashes are extremely subtle or soft, just because I have. 
And I'm always doing contrast, contrast in color, contrast in light and dark, contrast in the color combos. It makes it look more interesting, it pulls it in. And I find for camera, that's what sets you apart when you're doing makeup and you, you know, in photography and you, you know, want to make your client pop. And if you're interested in seeing my setup for video, let me know. I might pop a picture of it on the end if I have time. Okay, so I'm gonna hold this up again. I'm gonna try and put my hand behind it. Gosh. Anyway, it's got a very beautiful cross pattern. So I've just applied the glue. And for those of you who are more experienced, who are finding this tedious, I like to try and make my videos so that the newbie and the professional can understand. So sometimes I take time out to explain that I take the end of something and I put the glue on. And you know, it takes about 60 seconds for it to get tacky, so you do not have to rush to apply these. And if you feel you have too much, you can just wipe some off and it dries clear. My favorite glue is the Duo White Glue. And so because we already have liner on, we don't have to worry about it being perfect. If you can't see properly or you're new to lashes, what you want to do is make sure your corners are in place and then pop your middle maybe down a little bit. But usually it just sucks right to it. You don't have much to do. If you see anything white, leave it because um, it's going to dry clear. And then we're going to go in and pop that one on. And don't overthink it. As you can see, I'm just gently placing it. I'm really more concerned about corners more than anything and that's a habit from taking people's photos. Um, your makeup artist will fix all that for you and like Beth from All Dolled Up is great. She can eat, she'll give you lessons if you want to learn. Um, you know. Okay, so those are on. Okay. And I am in love with the Shiseido mascaras. They are gorgeous. Beautiful big tube and brushes. Um, doesn't dry out. Applies very smooth and easy. As you can see, I have like beautiful, I have brought the bright green, the blue. Um, for the purposes of the video, I'll do green on the bottom because I have so much green going on and I've got purple as my contrast, so it's gonna contrast against it. So you'll see the green on the bottom because I put purple on the bottom. Or purple, pink, whatever. And if you don't like the way I'm applying stuff, um, too bad. <laughs> so I just zigzag across. This is a great mascara. I don't have to do a lot of work. And I've also been using, I need to give a shout out to Grande Lash Brow Lash Serums. Oh my God. I've even been testing out the Growth Hair Serum and everything's grown in. Like this eyebrow has no pencil on it. This is an eyebrow that I have sculpted and grown in. Um, I may have a little bit on my ends, but it's like unbelievable and I've been so happy with it. It'll make you feel amazing. So I basically got the travel size kit. It had a sample lash, brow, two plumpers, and the hair growth serum, and I'm still going through it. It's been over a month. Love it. And so I'll continually use that because I had looked into doing microblading um, because my birthday is coming up and I thought, oh, you know, they look so sparse. They grew right in. You just have to be patient, apply it every night on a clean skin and shut up and let it happen. Okay, so this is my eye look. I hope you like it. All right, so we need a lip. We need to touch up the liner and let me get back to you. Hey guys, welcome back. So this is the final look. I will do a zoom in so you can see the eyes. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed the video. 
um, please like, share, and comment. Click that bell for notifications on my latest videos. But the whole point of this look is that it's about working with shadow, light, and darks, so using those primers, those concealers, things that'll make your makeup pop either on yourself or on a client. And if you don't know what you're doing and you have a special event, um, companies like All Dolled Up who specialize in airbrush makeup are the way to go. And I'll list their info below if you're in the North Carolina area. Uh, they do travel, they do uh, surrounding areas and more, so um, that's something to look into. And um, just keep in mind that it's all about getting whatever result you, you want using whatever tools you need to do to complete the job. So um, airbrush makeup isn't for everybody, but it is for people who love that flawless look or makeup enthusiasts who just love to play. So don't feel you can't purchase the equipment or go into the product line because you're not a makeup artist. You don't have to be. And if you are a makeup artist thinking about it, I do suggest investing in a gun and getting to it and trying it because it is amazing uh, for photography, video, um, the coverage and it's 24 hour wear. Um, I love it. I wear it every day and one of the reasons why I wear it every day is so I was constantly working with my gun. It's so important and whether you're new, a new artist or an older artist to keep technique up and you have to understand how the guns work to get those beautiful finished results and then you have to push and play and that's why I did this look with all these colors and just wanted to do something different. I think I've done my time with browns. I love them but I think I need something else now in my life. So purples, pinks, yellows, oranges. Um, I have tons of videos on my channel if you want to see more about airbrush makeup. If there's something I haven't done, uh, comment below. I'm more than willing to try it out and if you have questions about the actual products uh, feel free to put them down below I have no problem sharing information and my experiences and I hopefully it'll save you a lot of heartache and pain and uh, maybe some money because <laughs> I know I spent a ton of money figuring it out because there was nobody and there was no one to ask and there were no videos um, so once again thanks again for joining me I appreciate your support I appreciate your views and um, that's it bye